This is Excel Chapter 4. So we have just a few more skills we're going to learn, and these are more advanced. We're going to be doing what's called conditional formatting. We're going to also create a pivot table and some pivot charts. So we have to also open up the resource files. So if you downloaded the instructions, you should have also seen a resources folder that has some data we're going to be using. So make sure you downloaded that as well. So we're going to basically copy the past and projected sheet and we're going to copy it. So to do that, we're going to right click and move our copy and we are going to make a copy of it and we're going to change the name. So we're going to click on this box that says create a copy Oops. and we're going to move it to the end. So we're going to make its own sheet and click OK. And then we're going to rename it. So we're going to double click like we did when we were in the first uh, guided project. And we're going to call it ADB space FIL filter. And we're going to hit enter and we're going to actually click and drag. So when you want to move worksheets around, you put your mouse over the name or the tab, click, and then you drag it. And if you can see, it's really, really tiny, but there's a little triangle that points to tell you where it's going to end up. <clears throat> so now we're going to basically create a table. It seems like this is a table, but what a table does is it allows us to sort and filter data. So it says to go to the um, advanced filter sheet, and we're going to select cells A4 to E60. So I'm actually going to type that in here. A4 colon E60 and hit enter, and it highlights everything that I need rather than having to do it with my mouse. And then we're going to click on the quick analysis tool, which is this little box that pops up whenever you highlight something. So we're going to click on this quick analysis button and we're going to choose tables. And we're going to actually just create a table. So when you do that, you'll notice that these little drop down arrows pop up and then you have this colored background. Um, and we're going to change the style. So we're going to click anywhere within the table and we're going to go to this section over here when the design tab pops up where it says table styles. We're going to click the more button and we're looking for table style medium, number 15. And it's in numeric order. So 15 is this black one, third one, third row. Now we're going to select some criteria and we're going to do an advanced filter. So we're going to highlight cells A4 to E4. And then we're going to copy and paste them. So we're going to right click, copy, and then paste them into G4. So we're going to right click on G4 and then click paste. Now we're going to go into G3 and it says to type in the words criteria range. And we're going to change the font from the highlight. Change the font to Cambria size 16. <laughs> then I'm going to adjust column K, so I'm going to put my mouse over K and L and double click so you can see everything. J. In cell G8, I'm going to type in the words extract <laughs> range. And then I'm going to make the font size the same as the criteria. So I'm going to highlight, change it to Cambria and size 16. And then I'm going to copy the labels from here. So I'm control C, going to copy and I'm going to paste it into cell G9. Now I'm going to create my filter. So in cell, I'm going to hit escape to stop. In cell G5, I'm going to type in greater than 12, 31, 16. So I'm looking for anything after December 31st, 2016. And in H5, I'm going to type in the word MRI and hit enter. And then in H6, I'm going to type in CT scan. And there's a picture of this on the top of your instructions. So what I just did was I set up some criteria. I'm looking for anybody who's had 
an MRI or a CT after 2017. Well, actually, MRI is after 2017 and CT is anytime. And so I'm going to click anywhere in this table and I'm going to click the data tab and oops data tab and I'm going to go to this section over here that says advanced and I'm going to click copy to another location and then I'm going to verify that it says A4 to E60 and the dollar symbols remember we added that in the last guided project those create absolute cell references it doesn't change anything it just means we're always looking back at this set of data and then we're going to go to the criteria range box and I'm going to type in G4 colon K6. You can actually click and drag if you want, but that's easier for me to do. And then in the copy to box, I'm going to type in G9 colon K9. And then click OK. So. I have all of my CT scans, but only the MRIs from after the beginning of 2017. Now we're going to do some conditional formatting, which is basically we're setting some conditions and it can then allow us to change the fonts or the colors if it meets those conditions. So it's going to, it says in step number eight, select I-10 to I-25. And then we're going to go to the home tab and in this section over here where it says styles, we're going to go to conditional formatting. Highlight cells if, and we're going to go to the greater than. So if it's greater than 751, we want the cells to be highlighted green fill with dark green text. And you notice there's three of them that have more than a thousand patients. Now we're going to import some values into a new, um, into a spreadsheet. So we're going to click on the expense info tab and click in cell A3. And then on the data tab, we're going to go to from text. And we're going to find that reference uh, resources that we downloaded. So that's this one on mine. And then click import. We want it to be delimited. We don't have to do anything else. And then we're going to click next. We're going to remove the tab one and we're going to add comma because that's the way that the data is input into that particular um, resource file. And then click finish. And we want it in the existing sheet, so click OK. So that's all of our data. We're going to insert two new rows at row three. So we're going to right put our mouse over row three, right click and insert one insert two and then we're going to type in cell a4 the Mommy. title representative in cell b4 date and in cell c4 amount Mama. And enter and then we're going to auto fit column c so Hi. put your mouse Hi. above c and d and double click now we can sort through the data we did a filter on the other worksheet and we're going to do a, a sort on this one <coughs> I'm going to click on cell A5, and then I'm going to click on in the data tab, which is where I was just now. We're going to go to this button that says sort and filter. And we're going to sort from A to Z. So now all of the names are in alphabetical order. And now I'm going to do a subtotal so that it's going to combine all of the records for each of these individuals together. So I'm going to click on cell A5, and then on the data tab, you have a section over here called outline. We're going to click on cell two. and we want to change um, the, at each change, we want to make it say representative, or it's what it should say already. We want the function to be, instead of sum, we want it to be average. And then in the amount, ab subtotal two is going to be amount. And then we click OK. So it gave us an average of each of their expenses for the month, for the first quarter, January, February, March. And we're going to click on column C, and highlight them as currency. So I'm going to go to the home tab, 
in this number section, I'm going to choose currency. And it says currency with no decimals. So when you do currency, automatically puts the cents. Right below that um, number format box, you have these two buttons. One to increase decimals and one's to decrease. So we're going to decrease the decimals so that all you see are dollar values. Now we're going to do something called the go seat. We're basically going to be looking for something. So it says in step 12A, type target, march, expense, and cell E4. So we type target march expense in cell E4. Now we're going to click on cell C8, which is Mary Jo's average. And I'm going to, in the data tab, go to this button that says what if analysis. So I'm going to choose that and I'm going to go to goal C. And so I'm going to, basically the value box is 600. And I'm going to ask to change cell C7. So what I'm basically doing is I'm saying if I wanted the average of Mary Jo's expenses to be $600, what would I need my March expenses to be? That's what I'm doing. And then I click OK. So if I want my target value to be $600, then my um, target value for March has to be $600. So, and I'm going to cancel and I'm going to type that in to sell F5. So, $600. So, that just allows me to do some what if. It says in step 13 to collapse these groups. So, I'm going to click on these minus signs. So, all I see are the averages rather than the monthly expenses. And then I'm going to create what's called a pivot table in step 14. So I'm going to click past and projected. I'm going to select, I'm going to type in in the name box to select A4 colon E60. And then I get the quick analysis button. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to go to tables. And I'm going to choose a pivot table. And I'm using a pivot table um, that shows the sum of each field. Okay, so I'm looking for that, this one. So you notice it has sum of employees, um, sum of total hours, and sum of patients. So that's the one I'm choosing. And I'm going to rename this and double click. I'm going to call it pivot table. Okay. So now I'm going to add a chart so you can see what's happening with that chart. So I'm going to click any cell within this table. And I'm going to go to the um, analyze tab. And I'm going to go over here to where it says pivot charts. I'm going to choose a line chart. That's the one that best represents my data. And I'm going to choose one with markers so that you can see where the dots for the data are. And I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to move it so that it's right next to the table. And then in the chart, I'm going to remove the check marks for number of employees. So now you notice number of employees doesn't show up anymore, but if I go back and I click on it, it comes back. So this is just a different way of creating a chart so that I can choose what I want to show up on my chart really easily. Whereas if you do a regular chart, you actually have to create multiple ones depending on what you want to see. Last couple of steps is to change some of the protection. So I remember when we were talking about in class, I said if you wanted to share these, you can protect things so that people can't change your formulas. And so what we're going to do is unlock something and then protect the password. So we're going to click on the past and projected tab. And we're going to select a different set of cells. So we're going to type in the name box C5 colon E60. 
and then we're going to go to the format cells menu so that's over here on the home tab we're going to go down to where it says lock cell oh i'm sorry the protection tab and we're going down to where it says uncheck this lock box and then click ok now we're going to protect the worksheet so on the review tab we are going to go to the section where it says changes and we're going to go to the um, button that says protect sheet and we're going to go these should be selected if we needed to you can check them off and our password is 321 okay, okay. and it's going to ask us to type it again okay so now our uh, workbook is protected in case anybody wants to change it they can so that's the end of chapter four you can go ahead and save and submit